Okay, let's start with these guys, uh, the meso uh, metazoa and perazoa guys. Uh, there are two groups of, we still consider them as animals, but they're not similar to other animals, and you will see in a minute. Uh, we will not emphasize on them too much, uh, but perazoa, yes, we will talk about them. Uh, came from the introduction, uh, these multicellular organisms came from unicellular organism, unicellular organism, one, one cell organism. There are three theories. One theory that syncytial ciliated cells like paramecium that has more than one nucleus. Syncytial, it means cells that have more than one nucleus. You saw another one uh, earlier during semester like your skeletal muscle, right? Your skeletal muscle considered to be as a syncytial cell, a cell with more than uh, one nucleus. Colonial flagellated, like ball box. It's flag ball box, it was flagellated. It was a lab practical exam question, I believe, or I don't know, I can't remember. And monophyletic. Monophyletic, it means we multicellular organisms came from one phylum. Before it was polyphyletic, but now it changed. Not, and I just mentioned it here, not polyphyletic multicellular organism evolved from one phylum and not more than uh, multiple phylum. Then all of these three scientists believe the second one is the most accepted one, ribosomal RNA sequencing supporting number two, which uh, that's the one uh, most people believe. Again, they use RNA first. Uh, for similarities, and then if the RNA is uh, very close, very similar, they move on to our RNA. Uh, in bio one, you study there are three different type of RNA: RNA, rRNA, mRNA, and tRNA. But anyhow, <clears throat> so these are the three theories. There are three grades of metazoa. Again, um, the grades it's a slow, it's not one of those things you learn in classification. King Paul, you remember Kingdom, Phylum, Class, Order, Genus, Species, King Paul came over for a good rock and roll. So uh, it's not one of those, but uh, there are three grades of metazoa. Metazoa, it means multicellular organisms, okay? Uh, of course, animals, we are focusing on animals. So there are three grades of metazoa. One of them is mesozoa, one phylum, and all are parasitic of octopus and other organisms on the surface of the octopus. Uh, and then the other one, perizoa, which, is, uh, which are the sponges, and we will talk about that. And then eometazoa, which is rest of semester material. Okay, eo, it means true metazoa, true multicellular organisms. But these two are different, um, uh, so they put them in different grades. I hope I'm making some sense. Okay, phylum mesozoa, again, is not minute, very small, ciliated, worm-like, vermiform, they call them. And what did I say? All parasitic of invertebrates like octopus uh, and squids and so on and so forth. And then adults called uh, vermiforms, vermiforms, it means worm-like. So that's, that's all I have to say about uh, mesozoa. The uh, phylum uh, placozoa, uh, they glide over the food using digestive enzymes. Again, I do not have much to say about that phylum either. Clades, okay, under the, under the grades, you remember there are three grades, uh, I just talked about it. Under the grades, there are clades. And under the clades, they, it is a phylum, okay? I made a PowerPoint slide of these things. I hope it shows up uh, somewhere. Uh, we spent some time last semester making it up. I hope it shows up. But anyhow, it will, will make sense with that diagram that I did draw. <coughs> Things will make a little bit more sense. Clade lophotrochozoans, uh, yeah, major clades of uh, bilateral symmetry are lophotrochozoans, uh, ichthyosoa, and deuter uh, deuterostomia, uh, which uh, you guys are familiar with this one, deuterostomia, ichthyosoa. Ectisozoa, we will talk about them later on during semester, but we are going to, the first group of Lophotrochozoa, we are going to study that for this exam material. Not Sponges are not Lophotrochozoans, they are in a different grade. Bilateral symmetry uh, and uh, tr uh, triploblastic, some develop lopho, uh, Lophopore, uh, larva, ciliated tentacles or crown for feeding. Some have uh, trochophore larvae, 
and there are 18 phyla in this clade, and out of those clades that we are going to study platyalmentes, we are going to study rotifers, mollusks, uh, annelids, acanthocephala, and nemertia. Nemertia, we will not study them in great detail, but we have one or two specimens, one specimen uh, that you should look at them for lab practical purposes. But the other ones, we are going to study them, but the other phyla, we are going to study them in great detail. As time goes on, it will make sense. Okay, this is the larva, this is a trochophore larva, uh, is ciliated in the middle, and that's what uh, these animals, uh, they have in common, that's what they do. Uh, clay ichthyosoa, uh, animals that uh, shed their tough external cuticle or coat, cuticle coat, molting or ecdiasis, and there are eight phyla, out of those eight phyla, we are gonna study uh, three, uh, <coughs> nematoda, arthropoda, and onychophora. Onychophora is something between arthropods and annelids. Nematoda is like roundworm inside of your uh, dogs and cats uh, gut. Um, and we'll study them. Not, again, none of these are in this exam. None of these three phyla are in this exam. But I'm just giving you a general uh, overview of what are the three clays. Uh, clays, uh, deuterostomia, which you already know what deuterostom animals mean, anus first. Okay, well, and through the imagination. Um, Echinoderma, uh, hemichordata, and chordata, those are the three which are gonna be, these two are gonna be for final exam. <coughs> Echinoderma, the uh, starfish, is gonna be for exam number five. Okay, so again, none of these you have to worry about. Okay, let's talk about phylum uh, porophora, which is in its uh, own uh, grade. You know, it's great uh, uh, placozoa. Uh, sponges, uh, filter feeding system by ostia. Ostia is plural, ostium is singular. Do not confuse it with osculum, two different things. Ostia and osculum. Again, uh, scientists who first start naming these things, I, I would recommend they put them a little bit different, but they didn't. But anyhow, you will see. You will see it in a minute. Uh, sessi, it means they don't move, <coughs> and they're all aquatic, okay? Uh, uh, spicules made up of calcium carbonate and silicon or spongin, and spongin is made up of uh, collagen, like bath sponge. Whenever you go to the uh, uh, shower and you have some bath, if it is not synthetic bath, it's a natural um, sponge, then that, is, that does not have calcium carbonate or silicon. It has spongin, which is a collagen protein molecule. Asexual and sexual reproduction, of course, four classes of sponges. Um, they, uh, we only have specimen for three of them. One of the classes, don't worry about it, for lecture or lab, uh, I will not, I'm not too concerned with it. Uh, but uh, the other three classes, yes, first time, uh, that you are, um, I will, you will see something on the microscope or you will see a specimen, an animal, which all of the animals here are dead, you know that. But you see an animal, then I will ask you what class. Okay, so these are the right answer to the class. So now from here on until the end of semester, you should know the name of the class. And when we get to arthropods, then there is one more class and also order that you should know. But anyhow. So uh, calcarea with uh, calcareous, it means calcium carbonate. Uh, hexatenolidia, hexa, in a prefix, suffix, not you know, in your prefix, but in ochem, you studied hexa means what? Six. six, it has six sides. So these are the spicules that have six sides, okay? So six straight uh, siliceous uh, spicules uh, made up of silicon. And demospongy, uh, skeleton, uh, uh, skeleton of siliceous uh, spicules, or um, demospongy, the bath sponge belongs to this class. Okay, the bath sponge, we do have examples of them in the box. And uh, they have uh, both siliceous silicon, made up of silicon, and also spongin, which you do have slide of spongin um, that is made up of um, protein molecule uh, collagen. Okay, and the last one, sclerospongiae, which is, uh, we do not have specimen. Uh, some textbooks, they say there is only three classes. Some textbooks, they say there is a fourth one. Uh, we do not have specimen. You do not have lecture notes. Um, just don't worry about it. 
but I'm just putting it out there that you know some textbooks, some authorities with sponges, they say there is a fourth class. They like to separate some of them and put them in a different class. But anyhow. Okay, uh, here is the general body plan of sponges, and I'll go over into some more detail. So this is the, it's a, like a base, a flower, you all know what I'm talking about, flower waste. And then on the top is osculum, right on top, right there, the very top is osculum. So all of the water that goes from outside of the animal, I can say the word animal now, I feel better. <laughs> And protista, sometimes I said animal, please forgive me, they are not animal. But now I can comfortably say animal. Okay, so when the water goes from outside of the animal to the inside of the animal through these holes, pores, those pores are called osteum. Did they mention it in here? No, I guess not. But next slide, osteum. That's why the name of the phylum is porifera, pore, porifera. They have many pores outside of the animal, okay, and those pores are called osteum. So generally, a water goes in and get trapped in these cells, quinocytes, you mentioned that, they have flagella, and they have microvilli. Microvilli, uh, the question I ask you today, what is it similar to the system, is similar to what? To our digestive system, is that right? Our digestive system the simple columnar epithelial tissue in our digestive system does not have flagella, right? It just our muscular movement of intestine push the waste out, right? We do not have flagella, but we do have brush border or microvilla to absorb the food and nutrient. That's what these guys are doing, to absorb the food and nutrient into these quinocytes, and quinocytes, after they absorb food and nutrient, they give it to amoebocytes right here, and the amoebocytes will make spicules and maintain the animal. Okay, so, and these are the opening, they're showing it on it. Uh, another name for quinocytes is collar cells. C-O-L-L-A-R, uh, collar cells. Okay, so uh, let's go into a little bit more detail. Well, uh, a few other cells. Here is the spicules, as you can see, look like a star or I don't know what. And then amoebocytes is making it up, right? Make up the spicules, amoebocytes. And let's go one more time. Right here is the opening where the water comes in. And then this is called spongoseal. Seal on your prefix and suffix means what? Space. Spongoseal. Best name they possibly could pick up for it. Spongoseal, the space. So the water comes in here and out through the spiculum. But before the water goes out through the spiculum, a few things happen. Right here, uh, the uh, quinocytes absorb the food and nutrient, microvilli, right? And they absorb food and nutrient and they give it to amoebocytes. And uh, right here, a few other cells. So amoebocytes, water, spongoseal, body cavity, uh, porocyte. Right here, they, on these opening, on the osteum opening, there are cells called porocytes. Poro, it means pore, site, it means cell. So these cells can close if there is danger outside, if there is poison, there is some kind of something that the animal can sense. You, again, they do not have a nervous system. In bio one, you ask a very good question. You can ask, what is it that they can detect? The bio one question. What is it that these cells have that they can detect what is outside and they close so the water does not come in? Anybody? Bio-1, cell receptors, right? So these cells have receptors, protein molecules on the surface of the cell. The receptors can detect what is poison, if it is something poison outside, and then, then they close. So the cell receptors, you studied in Bio-1, you studied for the rest of your life, if you're going to this field. Okay, I hope I'm making some sense. They can detect and they can know what is going outside and they, of course it, uh, a sequence of events happens inside of the cell. In this case, the sequence of events happens inside of the cell. They close so water cannot come in. And then you have quinocytes uh, or collar cells, epidermis. Uh, they did not mention uh, pinacocytes in here. Okay, maybe next time. Okay, so that's again general picture 
uh, of uh, sponges. Uh, three types of canal, ascoid, <coughs> cyconoid, and leuconoid. <coughs> ascoid, flagellated sponges, simplest of the three. Simple of this three. Cyconoid, flagellated canal, larger addition of ascoid, and leuconoid, flagellated chamber, uh, water current is uh, through all fresh water and most marine sponges. Now, remember, sponges are not quiz question, exam questions. Sponges are not classified based on the canal type. All four classes or three classes have these three different type of canals. So sponges are not classified based on the canal type. They are classified based on the spicules and the shape, the general shape. Like a, a vase, we talked about it. So it's based on, the, of course nowadays they use a lot of DNA, uh, but generally for our purposes in this class, they are used, what is the classification of sponges is based on their spicules, their shape, and a few other characteristics. Sexual reduction or not. Okay, here are the three. This is a horrible picture. I'll show you a better one. This does not match the one that is in your slides. The actual animal is not this one. Can you guys see this or should I move this out of the way? <coughs> You're good. Okay, so uh, the most simplest of all is ascanoid and they give you a name of a species, uh, Leucosolenia. We do have this on microscopic slides. So in the parentheses is the name of a species, genus, genus of a species. Okay, so genus, uh, ascanoid, very simple. It has osteum, and then on the surface of the animal, finally, they mentioned the term pinacrocytes. Pinacrocytes, uh, similar to epithelial cells of us, um, uh, squamous, epithelial tissue, so they are on the surface, and then uh, right in here you do have uh, porocytes, they mentioned that, the water comes in, goes to the, uh, the uh, quanocytes or collar cells, filter it, and they give the food to amoebocytes right here, the yellow area is called meso uh, mesoglia layer or me uh, um, uh, mesenchyme layer, is a layer, is a gelatinous layer, like a jello and then food is absorbed and given to these amoebocytes and amoebocytes, they do their function, their work. And then finally get out through this. On these guys, the cyconoid type canal, the type of canal, and I get, it, it, it gave you a name of species, cycon. For this cycon, there are three different names. I don't know, forgive them, not forgive me, I didn't do anything there. There are three different names for the same species. Okay, I hope I'm making some sense. And one of them is called Cycon, the other or one of Cycon, Grantia, and uh, Cyconoid, I don't know, Cyconoid is a, there's a one of them, Grantia, you might see on your slides on textbook lab man, you see Grantia, uh, so same thing. So, Cyconoid, uh, you have radio canal, incurrent canal, give me a rain check until next slide, it, it, it is explained much, much better, this is one of your textbooks, not good. Prosopire, all of these, I will go over them. Incurrent uh, canal, uh, canals do not have quanocytes. It means they are outside of the animal. Incurrent canals do not have quanocytes. It means they are outside of the animal. Leuconoid is the most complex of the three. Most complex of the three. It is leuconoid and pure sponges, like bath sponge. We have a specimen of it. And it's like this. They have a chamber. Water comes into incurrent canal. Then goes into the chamber. It filtered and then get out through osteum. I do not have much, again, I, all you have to know, they have flagellated chambers, which is the quantocytes, and then out. Uh, but let's talk about this guy a little bit. Uh, types of cells found in mesoheal, uh, mesoglia, mesenchyme, of the, the gelatinous layer between the pinacrocytes, you all know what I'm talking about, between pinacrocytes outside of the animal, and coanocytes inside of the animal. There is a layer, that gelatinous layer is called uh, mesoheal, mesenchyme, so on and so forth. Pinacrocytes, uh, pinacrocytes, again, a portion of it, if you think about it, portion of it is inside of that mesoheal, mesenchyme layer. 
the rest of it is outside, but portion of it is inside. So that's why we call it, uh, it is, uh, helps to regulate surface area of the sponge, epithelial cell life on the surface of the end. Then coanocytes, again, coanocytes portion of it is in the mesothelial, mesenchyme, mesothelial area. And the other portion of it is inside of the animal, which the flagella push the water out. Okay, and then completely, the cells that are completely embedded in mesohial, mesenchyme area is archaeocytes. Arche means ancient. The cells that are ancient like amoeba like, uh, they phagocytize the food and they maintain uh, the sponges. I hope I'm making some sense. If, I, if there's any question, all right. Here we go. This is what you, this is not in your textbook. Um, this diagram is not in your textbook. Uh, maybe it is. Nowadays they put it. Yeah, I see it. It is in your textbook now. Uh, but it, is, it should be your lab manual. Okay. <clears throat> so with this picture, this diagram, there are two concepts that you should be familiar with. One of them filter feeding and the other one is uh, absorption of food and nutrient. Okay, movement of water. I'm sorry. Filter feeding, absorption of food and nutrient. And the other concept is movement of water. Let's go over it quickly. <clears throat> This is the longitudinal cut of the animal. They took a sponge and they cut it like this. They put it on a flat. And they took the same sponge, they cut it like this, a cross section, and they put it right here. So this is a cross section. This is a longitudinal section. Okay, so if you look at your sponge, say sponge L S. L dot S, longitudinal section. Okay, and C S cross section. I hope I'm making some sense. So they took the sponge like this, uh, like Cycon, Grand Shield, and they cut it. So when they cut it, there is a zigzag back and forth, back and forth. This is, guys, I hope you're not, I hope you're understanding what I'm saying. This is same as, I didn't know it was that bad. It, uh, the same as this one, right? This one is not a good one. I don't like it. So uh, it does not make much sense. That's the one. And it is in your textbook. So zigzag back and forth. The outside, this opening outside, you see it? It's a little bit small, I'm sorry. But a little bit, op that opening outside is called osteum. With U-M at the end. Osteopural. And then the canal that is inside, that is outside of the animal. You see what I'm saying? This is outside of the animal. And that canal it is called in now, which does not have quinocytes. Okay? Then water goes in through some openings right here. Those openings are referred to as, did they mention them? Uh, it's referred as prosopile right here. They mention them very small. These openings are referred to as a prosopile. So the water goes from incurrent canal to radial canal through the opening that is called prosopile. Okay, so the water goes to prosopile, and then of course, we talked about it, get filtered by quinocytes. I'm not going to go over it again. And then the quinocytes, the flagella, push the water out, and the water comes into radial canal. From radial canal, the water goes to sponges, uh, 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 apple pile, the opening of the uh, radial canal to the sponge seal is called apopile. And of course, the water comes from apopile, goes to sponge seals, and out through osculum. This is a bigger, they blow it up right here, and you can see all of these structures. Um, apopile, uh, where it is inside of the animal. Osteum, so osteum is in, outside, so here is incurrent canal, radial canal. Apple pile right here, and then the water goes to sponge seal and out through the, uh, through the osculum. And then I did talk about filter feeding. So the water coming in from osteum goes through uh, prosopile. The food gets trapped right here in the uh, microvilli of uh, coanocytes, and the food is given to uh, sponge seal. Uh, I'm sorry, to uh, archaeocytes, amoebocytes, and then the uh, water is pushed out by flagella 
into upper pile, from upper pile sponge seal, and out through ostium. So uh, important concept you should know for the sponges. There's not much to be said about sponges except this, yes, I think. But anyhow, yes. Where will we find the porocytes in this? Porocytes are right here, prosopile. Uh, these and not in here. Remember, these are good question. These are a larger version of askenoid type canal. Askenoid type canal, you find them right here. Of course, askenoids do not have this. The canal. They're just they're just like here, straight. I hope I'm making some sense. But these guys, since they have these back and forth opening, so porocytes are right here. So if the poison or something the animal does not want comes here, they close these porocytes on prosopile. On prosopile. Uh, where is that? Uh, they didn't mention it, huh? Right here, but yes, prosopile. Pretty small. I'm sorry about that. But but you do have it in your PowerPoints. It's in your textbook and everything else. Jose, yes. Would it be considered a leukinoid? It has a little chamber, or would it be synchronoid? What is leukinoid? The type of canal is the it is. Uh, I'm not, leukonoid is this one, which you do not have slide of it. Leukonoid now they have chamber, and this is the accurate picture of it. Okay, it would be like this. Uh, this is the accurate picture, which you do know we do not have slide of this, but we have slide of the whole animal, leukosolinia. We have the slide of the whole animal, but we do not have this slide specifically mentioned that. And this one is a cyclone, so it's not, you're asking me, uh, let me see if I understand your question. Uh, you're asking me, is this a leukonoid? No, it's not a leukonoid. Because leukonoid, uh, this would be in a chamber like this, and another one right here, another one right here, another one right here, throughout the animal. Okay, but this one, all you see is the ziggle back and forth, back and forth. It's not a chamber. Like. Yes, sir. Uh, between the three of these canal types, is there a difference in efficiency of food absorption? Say the more complex, say the glucanoids would be more efficient at pulling food out of the water than the. Uh, I, I, I think, if you ask my personal opinion, yeah, absolutely. I think glucanoid is the most efficient one. They absorb more food and nutrient than any other one. Any other one. It's the most most efficient one. Is this one? Yeah. Uh, because it's more complex. Again, remember, that's another thing about evolution. The more complex the animals become, the more efficient they become. 1920s car, they probably gave you one miles per gallon. Nowadays, of course, Lexus and other. Hummer. Hummer gives you one mile. Is it 10 miles? A Hummer is 10 miles. <laughs> Hummer, is, Hummer, Hummer is 10 miles per gallon. But yeah, you know, I'm, I'm making it up. I say 1920s, 19, it gives you one mile. It was probably 10. 50 miles per gallon, but nowadays it's more efficient than they supposed to, but they don't make them. Yes, you're right, absolutely right. The liquinoid is the most efficient one. Okay, I went over everything. Different types of archaeocytes, uh, sclerocytes secrete spicules, spongocytes, they secrete spongin, uh, uh, clanocytes, they, uh, they secrete collagen. Uh, more amount of the spongocytes. Spongin is both of them are made up of collagen. So maybe on this one I should have said colonocytes secrete a little bit more uh, collagen than the other one, uh, than uh, spongocytes. And lophocytes, large amount of collagen. They release a tremendous amount of collagen. Reproduction, uh, asexual by budding and regeneration. Uh, gemules, internal bud. That's what they are. Uh, we do have a slide of it. Make sure you look at it. Um, what else? Sexual reduction. Uh, they're monaceous. What is the term monaceous means? Huh? They have both male and female reproductive structure. Okay, they have both male and female. Uh, male and female reproductive structure. So these animals are called monaceous. Are we human monaceous? No, we are designed to be a dioecious. Okay, I'm talking about normal, normal cases. There are babies who are born uh, with both genitalia. I hope I'm making some sense. I'm not talking about that. 
I'm talking about normally we are born or we are diaceous. Sexes are separate. Uh, sperm and oocysts are, are formed from coanocytes, okay, um, and zygotes in parents called viviparous. Another term, another thing that maybe I should introduce you guys here for the rest of the semester, uh, the term viviparous, it means giving birth. We human give birth, so we are viviparous. Birds, on the other hand, they lay eggs. Okay, they lay eggs, and when they lay eggs, they uh, brood. They brood it. They sit on it until those type of animals are called that they lay eggs and they brood it for a longer period of time. It's called oviparous. And then we have some other animals that they lay eggs, but either the egg inside of the animal become mature, like scorpions, and then the young gets in the back of the animal, or when they lay eggs immediately after they lay it, they hatch. So those are the animals called ovo by the virus. So we have oviparous, like birds, they lay eggs and they brood it. And then we have ovoviviparous, ovoviviparous animals, they lay eggs, they do not give birth. They lay eggs, and the eggs either immediately inside or outside of the animal hatch. Okay, so they have, they form eggs. We human have eggs too, but our eggs needs to be fertilized inside of us. Okay, so it's a story is a little bit different. Okay, oviparous are the other type of animals that they lay eggs, and the eggs will hatch. Uh, um, some sponges could be that one, I doubt it, but, but look, I, I can remember. Uh, class calcarea, quickly, let's go over the classes. Uh, spicules are calcium carbonate. Uh, spicules have three or four rays. Um, uh, tubular or base shape. Um, Ascanoid, cyconoid, or leuconoid. All three different type of canals. All three different type of canals can be found in this class. We do have specimen in there that uh, are, belongs to class calcarea. So uh, class hexatenolidia, class sponges, the common name, the common name for the class is called class sponges. You almost can make it out. So hexatenolidia, class, class, sponge, class, class. <laughs> <laughs> Skeleton is six rate, uh, salacious spicules, oh that's all I have to say. Uh, salacious spicules, they could have some of the species could have calcium carbonate as well. Uh, class Demospongae, bath sponges, uh, another name for them is called the horny sponges um, because of the uh, collagen. Uh, large sponges belong to this class. Salacious, silicon, uh, all leuconoid, and leave gemmules behind in kernel bud. Bath sponges like salacious spicules, and they have spongin instead, spongin made up of uh, uh, calcium, uh, made up of. Uh, College. Class score spongiae again, uh, don't worry about uh, these again. Um, we do not have uh, anything like that. Here is a chamber that uh, Patrick was talking about. It's a more efficient way of, uh, more efficient way of uh, these animals absorbing food. In the is there any question? So let's go over a few things before, um, I don't want to be.